Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everybody. How are you? I hope you've enjoyed the gig so far, different styles and stuff like that. Um, my first time here at Comedy Unleashed. I hope you're going to enjoy what I do. What a fantastically handsome front row we have here, by the way. Good looking, good looking, good looking. You're doing the best you can. <laughs> My name is Sean and, uh, you know, this is the sort of gig where you don't really have to sort of open with the kind of guy you are. But let me just tell you now, if you don't know the kind of comedy I do, I'm, I'm, not, I'm a positive person, you positive people. Thank you to the two people who responded. <laughs> I think life's a lot more fun if you're positive. I think negative people are just annoying, aren't they? Yeah, yeah especially like when you're on a beach and there's somebody in the water going, I can't swim, I can't swim. <laughs> And you think, I can't play the guitar, but I don't go on about it, do I? <laughs> Get some lessons, stop boring us with your shit. <laughs> I'm not a woke person, I found that out to my car. I can't, you can't be woke if you regularly dream about running over Greta Thunberg in a diesel-powered tank. And then backing up and finishing the job. She seems like hard work to me. She looks permanently upset. She's got a face like a smack dance. And I've got to be honest with you, I don't know if she's got a boyfriend, but if she has, I bet he's in real trouble. <laughs> she seems like she'd be upset with everything. So, yeah, I'm not a woke person. I think to be, obviously, clearly, I'm not woke. I enjoy shoplifting in vegan supermarkets and... Uh, Obviously, to be woke, you have to care, and I don't care about anyone but myself. If I see someone choking on a piece of food in a restaurant, I don't even think of helping. I just think, with a bit of luck, in a couple of minutes' time, I have a pair of shoes and a new wallet. <laughs> this is how unwoke I am. I went to the David Lloyd Centre the other day. They said, which part of the gym are you most interested in? I said, the women's changing rooms and was shown the door pretty swiftly. <laughs> By the way, if there's any vegans in the room, I represent diversity because I love animals too, but I always wear a condom. <laughs> is, this, is this all right for you? I'm trying to give you my credentials up front here. I'm trying to do the Disney-friendly children material. Now, I live in London where smiling is a sign of weakness, as you well know. <laughs> Nothing works, no one wants to help you, half the beggars apparently look more healthy than we do. <laughs> and London is now the home of the bespoke beggar, isn't it? Have you seen this? Like, some people, you know, some places you go, the beggars just ask you for money. In London, we have beggars that actually want a precise amount of money. Have you seen this? A bloke jumped out of a skip the other day, he said, mate, have you got £2.78 so I can get a macchiato grande with extra froth? <laughs> I said, no, I have not, because beggars cannot be choosers. Now, I sense resistance in the room to that joke. <laughs> I'm here to tell you now that I will break you. I don't know, this country's a constant disappointment. I don't, we, I don't know what we're paying for half the time. I mean, you can say what you like about the Nazis, but the trains ran on time, didn't they? There were no replacement buses to Auschwitz, as far as I can see. Is this all right for you? Because you haven't laughed by now, I'd fuck off if I was you. London now has, for safety reasons, a cashless bus system. Are we all aware of that? I remember the old days where you get on a bus, just give them money, and you just go on with your day. Now we have, for safety reasons, a cashless bus system. So now in London, if you get on a bus with money, you turfed off that bus, <laughs> left on the pavement miles from home, next to skin desperate, violent people who now know that you've got money. <laughs> When you Japanese people in the room, I've got a lot of respect for the Japanese. They really know how to get rid of a prime minister, don't they? <laughs> oh, that's the joke that tips you over, is it? <laughs> Boris Johnson, a man who makes estate agents look trustworthy. <laughs> don't know about you, but never trust a man whose wife padlocks the fridge, in my opinion. So here we go, right? So we're going to try some, uh, some material here. Uh, it's been a nice heat wave so far. I've enjoyed the weather. I don't know about you, but I've... <laughs> How am I going to do this? I don't know. Should I do this? Sometimes. 
All right. Do you think obese people should be made to, to sort, of, sort of turn to Islam so at least they have to cover themselves up? <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, it's that kind of a prayer. Pedophiles love hot weather, don't they? Especially the ones that drive the ice cream bags. Okay, I pushed too far, I get that. Okay, I, feel, I feel it, I feel it. You're looking at a guy on stage now who is banned from Dubai. The compare mentioned Dubai. Have you enjoyed John Millet Frisbee, by the way? What a fantastic guy. A round of applause for him. To give the illusion that I care. Give him a round of applause to give the illusion that I care. He won't give me a lift time. He doesn't care. I've been to Dubai. Has anyone been to Dubai? If anyone's never been to the, what they call the Las Vegas of the Middle East, let me heed this advice. When you land in Dubai on a commercial flight, you get the welcome to Dubai message from the pilot in Arabic and then in English. And nobody on the plane I was on knew that. So when they did it in Arabic, we all thought the plane had been hijacked. <laughs> you land safely, you're taxiing towards the terminal, there are people on camels waving at you. Then you get this through the time. <laughs> Everyone just gets their wallet and travellers checks out. Just take the money, Abdul. I never touched it. Because Arabic is a very harsh sounding language. I had a throat infection while I was out there, coughed up some phlegm, accidentally ordered a taxi to the airport. <laughs> Sense resistance in the room once again. It's a difficult world in which we live. The fire brigade are thinking they're going on strike. Everyone's going on strike. How many people here think the fire brigade need more money? Yes. I do too, because when you're playing three card brag for 18 hours a day, <laughs> you need all the extra coins you get your hands on. They're mad, aren't they, the fire brigade? They go on strike, they want shorter hours and better conditions. For what are you talking about? An hour is 60 minutes, isn't it? There's nothing anyone can do about that. And better conditions, for fuck's sake, the places they're going to are on fire. I mean, how much easier do they want it? Whenever the fire brigade go on strike, they bring in the army. When the dustbin men go on strike, they bring in the army. I was talking to a midwife the other day. She said the midwives of England are considering going on strike. I thought, Christ, I hope they don't bring in the army for that. <laughs> There'd some, be some pretty brutal births, wouldn't they? Instead of, instead of a woman in a white coat between her legs going, pushed here, pushed there, a couple of guys with FATs just going, listen, fucker, you've got two minutes to come out. <laughs> well, we're coming in, make your mind up. I don't have children because I don't have sufficient uh, dungeon materials to keep. Do you know? <laughs> I am a horrible person. <laughs> Come with me into my joyously wrong world. I am a sort of person that watches the news completely pissed. It's all relentlessly grim anyway. If you watch Sky News at 9 a.m. in the morning with a couple of large scotches in you, it can be quite amusing. <laughs> Been an earthquake in Chile, I don't care. <laughs> what ridiculous name for a country that is anyway. I went there once, it was fucking boiling. <laughs> I'm the sort of person who watches people on the news who are in dire need of help, just doesn't care. Especially people who live in hurricane and tornado areas. They, I don't think anyone in this room lives in a hurricane and tornado area. It just seems a bit retarded to me. You know? These people are idiots, they're always going, it's the fifth hurricane we've had this week. <laughs> you think, well, fucking move then. <laughs> How many hurricanes do you need <laughs> before you realise it's not a terrific place to buy a house? <laughs> I think the estate agents must see these people coming. <laughs> 20 bedrooms house with a garage and swimming pool, 20 quid. It's a bit cheap, isn't it? Is it near the shops? Yeah, sometimes. Anyway, you know, it's that kind of thing.
I read a story the other day, you know, <laughs> like everyone wants to host like sporting events and stuff like that. And Sarajevo in Bosnia have put a bid in for the Winter Olympics. Despite the fact the only mountain they can hold it on currently has 1.5 million landmines on it. <laughs> How many people in this room tonight fervently hope, like I do, that they win that bid? Because <laughs> I don't really like watching downhill skiing on the television, but I'll fucking watch it if someone's going to hit a landmine. <laughs> you know, and end up winning the ski jump as a result of it. And even if they don't, they can always come back next year in the Paralympics. <laughs> Are we all on board? Good. So as you can see from my attitude, they don't last long in job interview situations. It's always a bit tense. You know, I went to anger management the other day. I'm not allowed to go back until the counsellor's wounds clear. It's not even my fault, you know? I didn't really lose my temper until I saw the fucking bill. And I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> Do you know what he said to me? Such an arsehole. He goes, um, Chill, you can't hate everybody. I said, I don't. I loathe some people. <laughs> and there's a massive difference between hate and loathe. Because if you hate someone, you can actually end up liking them. You go, listen, I used to think you were a fucking arsehole. But you're actually all right. But when you loathe somebody, there's nothing they can ever do to make up for it. They could swim through burning oil, holding disabled kids aloft. And you still think, wanker. <laughs> Under a lot of pressure at the moment. Just found out my wife's blood type matches her temperament. B negative, right? So, <laughs> that's right, I'm a married man. I used to be happily married, but I've matured. You see right through that charade. Because marriage promises way too much, doesn't it? Comfort, friendship, support, and occasionally some sex. But in the end, anyone who's married will know this. Marriage is part endurance test, part quiz. <laughs> Sometimes I think to myself, you know, surely one of these days you're going to answer one of these questions correctly. <laughs> and win a holiday for two in the Bahamas. The question is, who will you take? Because I have a wife stroke hostage who specialises in asking me questions where I genuinely feel there should be a lawyer present. There's always some sort of trick involved, there's always some sort of twist. I'm always under colossal pressure. I always feel like some mafia kingpin been interviewed by the authorities. She's always going, how old do you think I look? I cannot answer that question. On the grounds I might incriminate myself. Do you think I'm fat? I can neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> Do you love me? No comment. <laughs> I always find it weird when people get engaged that people go, congratulations. There's like a one in two chance it's going to fail. Why don't you just say good luck? <laughs> you go into a casino and put it all in red. The bloke doesn't go, congratulations. He goes, good fucking luck. And when you lose, the house wins. And if you lose in marriage, you lose your house. I mean, what's the fucking difference? <laughs> It's a very difficult world, I, uh... <laughs> and I, I, I genuinely mean this, right? You know, COVID is a weird thing. It's changed everything, isn't it? I remember a time when walking into a bank wearing a mask was considered aggressive. <laughs> I never believed half of it. Do you remember the rule of 12? Two people can only have sex if 10 of the neighbors are watching the kitchen near the fridge. <laughs> One of my mates said, COVID's ruined my life. I said, you got four kids, it's already ruined. What are you on about? came from an old school family, you know, I remember my, my mother used to, like, listen, I know this is a very contentious issue, you know, but um, seriously, how many people here think in principle you should be allowed to physically discipline your own kids? If I can see this routine is going to go down quite badly. <laughs> Alright, how many people ever think about hitting other people's kids, seriously? <laughs> Every fucking day. Especially on a Friday night when you're trying to get home, go out with your mates and just relax, there's always one kid loose on that bus. Just running around, flicking people's ears. And everyone always looks at the parent as if they go, can you please control that small sack of shit right now? <laughs> He's just tired, but why doesn't he go to sleep then? <laughs> That's what I do when I get tired. I don't run around buses flicking people's ears. 
If you saw a grown man on public transport just fucking flicking something, <laughs> you wouldn't think that poor bloke's just a bit tired. So very nice to be here, boys and girls. Is this all right for you, by the way? Is it, don't make the mistake of taking any of this seriously. If you want to, you know, look at the world in which we live, you know. I mean, you know, is anyone surprised at Russia? I'm learning Russia, so I'm learning Russia now because I want to be able to personally renegotiate my gas bills. Anyone else thought of that? <laughs> I mean, is anyone surprised at this arsehole? He looks thin, doesn't he? But you'd be thrilled if you went through three food tasters a week. Is anyone surprised that Russia's aggressive? Any place that is like famous for the AK-47 assault rifle and vodka is bound to be aggressive. <laughs> Look at the West Country, clotted cream, pasties, they've never attacked anyone. <laughs> and McDonald's have withdrawn from Russia. What a fucking stupid decision that is. I thought we were supposed to be punishing these assholes, not forcing them into like healthier options. <laughs> I think the only sanction that's really gonna work with Russia is Russia have now been banned from the Eurovision Song Contest. That's gonna, that's gonna be biting, isn't it? Yuri, we cannot shit, sing shit song in really cunty competition wearing stupid outfit. We must withdraw our troops from Ukraine. <laughs> so here's what I know about, here's what I know about John Bonnevue. Like, seriously, I do struggle with this sort of thing, you know? I mean, you know, I'm a bit aggressive, I will admit that, you know, but uh, sometimes during, a, here's what I know about John Bonnevue. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I think I'm not, right? During job interviews, you can't really say what you really think, can you? You know, they sit there and they go, so why do you want the job? And you sit there going, who the hell wants a job? <laughs> None of us want jobs, we have to get jobs, it's the only way to legally get hold of money. <laughs> Without robbing people, isn't it? <laughs> I went for a job interview once, the bloke says to me, where do you see yourself in five years' time? I said, I'm in a cup of tea and a tuna sandwich. He goes, how would you work that out? I said, because it's lunchtime now. Right? <laughs> I'm not really an expert, but I'm pretty sure in five years' time, it's going to be lunchtime, isn't it? <laughs> I can't believe you're in charge. I want to hit you over the head with a metal fire bucket. Some jobs are difficult, some jobs are easy. The hardest job I've ever had, working at reception at A&E at West Middlesex Hospital, it was the hardest and most frustrating 28 minutes of my life. <laughs> I got sacked day one, hour one. I thought it was a little bit unlucky, see what you think. I'm working at reception, which I think is the correct place for someone like me in a hospital because I am a natural welcomer. This bloke rings up, right? He goes, can you give them, he goes, can you give them the results of my autopsy? <laughs> he said, don't you mean biopsy? He goes, no, I want the results of my autopsy. He said, yes, yeah, sorry, got them right here. Apparently you died of complete and utter fucking stupidity. <laughs> Hardest job in the world and the easiest job in the world. I think the easiest job in the world by far, doing the weather on daytime television. Have you seen some of the shit these people come out with on daytime TV? With There's a 50% chance of rain tomorrow. What does that mean? It means it might rain, it might not. I could have told you that. Why don't you come outside the car park? There's 100% chance I'm going to punch you in the face, you fucking arsehole. You think the way they do the weather on TV is fundamentally wrong. They always have good looking people doing the weather on TV because people want to see good looking people on the television. I don't think they should do that for the weather. I think for the weather, they should have good looking people for good weather, right? <laughs> If the weather turns quite drastically, I want to see more and more hideously deformed circus freaks. Because that way you don't need a map, do you? If you turn on the weather and there's a bloke there with four heads and a dick growing out of his shoulders, 
I just think I'm staying in. It's a fucking simple system. Thank you very much indeed for listening to me. See you again some other time. Thank you.